Thank you, Lord. Let's go to the book of John chapter 18 this morning. And uh, we want to begin a new series this morning entitled Of the Truth. And we spent the last nine or ten weeks uh, talking about being skilled in the flow and of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the Lord began a few days ago to, to talk with me about some of this. Uh, never has there ever been a time that I can recall, uh, just in the world in general, but in our nation, where there's so much deceit. And I, I've cautioned you over the last ten weeks that you have to be listening to the Spirit of Truth inside of you. When you're listening to anything, you've got to be listening to the Spirit of Truth. I, I shared this with the church Wednesday, and I, I'll, I'll give you an example real quickly. Uh, I, don't, I don't watch the news. I stand before God. I don't watch it. I've, I've not watched it for years. I certainly don't watch it now. I don't care what's going on with them. But I saw a, 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 a comment, and it was just this real quick blurb, and it said, you know, uh, uh, that they were expecting uh, coronavirus cases to be 5 million. And immediately, right here, floated up this statement. How many people are in America? Well, I didn't know off the top of my head. You know, I don't keep that information just laying around. <laughs> but I found out 314 billion, or million, excuse me, 314 million people. The Lord said, do the math. You know, I did the math. I divided 5 million by 314 million. You know how much that is? 1.449%. 1.49%. 1 1.49%. That's not the people that passed away. When you start breaking down those numbers, it's like 1% of 1%. But yet everything you hear is how horribly strong this virus is. Oh my God, you better watch, you better watch, you know, watch out everywhere you go. And I'm not telling you not to take precautions, it's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is, is this. That's deceit. Amen. And it's being used as a tool of the enemy's plan. Amen. The devil wants people afraid of each other. The devil hates unity. Amen. You cannot have unity virtually. Amen. Because you're still in your house and I'm still in my house. I mean, how would this work? Well, we're virtually married. <laughs> the whole concept of marriage is unity. Right. Togetherness. Am I right? When, when Pastor Michelle and I are apart, we're apart every other, other week, uh, and, you know, FaceTime and things like that are wonderful. But, you know, you can't smell your wife's hair over FaceTime. Uh -uh. <laughs> right? right? Am I right? right? I can't hold her hand over FaceTime. Nope. Why? We're not together. Right. I can see her, but we're not together. See, you've got to be listening by your spirit. Amen. Because deceit is there. And the reason the world is so fearful is they're listening to the lie and just buying it. Amen. Well, this is the way it's going to be. And they don't stop to think of all the so-called experts that are saying all the stuff they're saying today. They were saying something totally different three months ago. Don't be deceived. The Lord said to me, He said, don't be deceived and listen to nothing that's deceitful. Don't be deceived and listen to nothing that's deceitful. He told me in my prayer time, He said, you need to pray that the tongue of deceit would be dulled and that the tongue of truth would be sharpened. So we want to look at this series for however long the Lord has us here, called Of the Truth. Of the Truth. You, you, you don't want information. You want information that's true. You want the truth. 
Jesus said it was the truth that would make you free. Amen. I've had people say, well, why are you not fearful? I know the truth. Amen. Once I know the truth, the bondage, whatever it is, is gone. Amen. Now notice, John chapter 18, verse 37. This is Jesus standing before Pilate. And he said, Pilate said, therefore, are you a king? Then Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world. Notice this, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone, say everyone. everyone. Notice, everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. And notice what Pilate said. What is truth? Is that what he said? Pilate said, what is truth? Now notice what Jesus said, first of all. Everyone that was of the truth hears his voice. Everyone that's of the truth hears his voice. And of course, of, we know that the, the preposition of is a, denotes origin. The thing, uh, uh, something is, is formed from. So Jesus says that you and I, because we can put ourselves in here because we hear his voice, he said that we originate from truth. Amen. The reason why lies are such a burden to believers is because we're of the truth. We're not supposed to contaminate our spirit with deceit. Amen. 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 Because if we do that, then we react, we respond, we act like the world in every situation. Amen. Amen. Now notice, Pilate's response was, what is truth? Without a knowledge of truth, you have no answers. Right. You have no stability, you have no security, because I don't have a knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. And so Jesus said, if you're of the truth, you hear me. And Pilate said, well, what is truth? If I don't know the truth, I have no answer. So as believers, I'm of the truth. That's my origin. I came from the truth. You came from the truth. And because we came from the truth, we're to desire truth. And do what? Avoid and shun falsehood and lies. Get away from them. Why? It's not part of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody lied to me one time, and, and they did it consistently. And Lord, I was talking to the Lord about it one time, and he said, well, uh, he said, here's my opinion. If they'll lie from you, they'll steal from you. Right. And you wouldn't hang around a thief while you hanging around a liar. Well, that made sense to me. Amen. We don't desire that. Tell your neighbor, I desire, truth. I desire truth. Amen. See, he said, don't be deceived and listen to nothing that's deceitful. Well, how do I know if it's deceitful? You're checking the spirit of truth. You've got to put more confidence in the divine teacher that you have on the inside of you than you do on what you're hearing or seeing. How difficult do you believe it was for the prophet Elisha to stand up in Samaria when they're eating dove's dung and donkey's head and say, tomorrow about this time? Is that what he said? Yeah. There's, go there's going to be so much, we're going to be selling it at a discount. Amen. Had to be hard. I mean, they just heard of a woman boiling her son and eating him. Right? Right? But he stood up because he had, Brother Hagin would say, inside information. Amen. He heard something everybody else wasn't hearing. Hallelujah. And so when you're sitting and you're watching something or hearing something and it comes up in your spirit, that's, that's not right, that's a lie, that's deceitful, turn it off. Don't sit there and, 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 and inject it into your spirit. Because you are of truth. And if you want truth to keep speaking to you, you can't cover it up and, and dumb it down with lies. Amen. Good. 
Glory to God. Notice here in John 8. John 8. I'm thankful the Lord, the Lord impressed this on me many years ago. I've been very careful about this. To keep that, the spirit of truth with unfettered access in my spirit. Hallelujah. I've been talking to people before, and they, they would say something, and I'd go, no, that's not how it is. And they'd either get mad at me or confess. Well, I don't know everything, but I have one in me that does. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit, remember over the last few weeks we've taught on it, that He will teach us all things, show us things to come, bring all things to our remembrance. Amen. Right? It's the Spirit of truth. Notice in John 8, verse 43. Jesus is talking to the uh, Jewish leaders and in verse 43, he says, why do you not understand my speech? Notice, because you can't hear my word. Now, hang on right there and remember what he told Pilate. Everybody that hears my word is of the truth. Is that what he said? Yeah. Notice what Jesus said. You are of your father. And then he tells us who he is. The devil. And the lust, the desires of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So they couldn't hear Jesus' word because they were not of the truth. So if I keep uh, 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 hearing things, paying attention to things, giving myself to things that are not truth, it's going to be harder for me to hear what God's trying to say to me. Right. So they were of their father, the devil. And Jesus did what? He made it very plain that if there is a lie, the origin of that lie is the devil. Amen. Right? Right? I've had parents talk to me before, and they, they would talk to me about their child, you know, little, little, little child, little toddler, something of that nature. And, and they would tell the story like it was cute. You know, the child lied to them. And they'd go, oh, isn't that, isn't that precious? No, it's devilish. It's a lie. Well, they don't know what they're doing, but they'll grow up and know what they're doing. Right. And if they grow up lying, you're going to have a liar. Right? See, Jesus said that lies, liars, are of the devil. Is that what he said? So when you see deceit and you see deceit running rampant, you know who's behind it. The devil. The enemy has tried so hard in this season that we're in, in this season that we're in, to hurt the church. Through what? Deceit. Deceit. Where does the church get off fearing the same things the world fears? How do we justify that? If I'm listening to the same thing the world's listening to, I'm going to think the same way the world thinks, and I'm going to respond the same way the world thinks. Amen. And I want to be real plain. I'm not talking about face mask and hand sanitizer. This thing is so much more deep than that. I'm so tired of hearing people put people that, that do certain things in another category. I'm so tired of that. I'm talking to you about the lies that the enemy is trying to perpetrate on people that are killing people. There are people dying because they believed a lie and got fearful and lost their life. You've got to be so selective. Why? Because Jesus said, you can't hear my words because you're not of the truth. Right. Do you see this? The Woos Bible says, as for you, out from your father the devil, you are, 
and the passionate cravings of your father you're desiring to be doing. That one was a manslayer from the beginning, and in the truth, he did not maintain his standing. So that means that not only do, am, am I of the truth, I've got to maintain my standing of being of the truth. Amen. Now, now, you know this, it's elementary knowledge uh, to, to many, but uh, uh, the devil wasn't created the devil. He wasn't created uh, 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 the adversary, right? He was created as the covering cherub. He was created as Lucifer. He was created as the morning star. That's what the scripture says. But what did he do? He believed a lie about himself. Right. Well, who told him that lie? Nobody had to tell him that lie. He started looking at himself and believed his own lie. That's why the Bible says when he tells a lie, he's the father of it. The devil lied to himself and destroyed himself through his lie. Amen. And that's what, that's, that, that's what he tries to get people over into. The Bible says that what will happen in the last days is that people will believe a lie. Read it in 1 Thessalonians. And because they believe a lie, strong delusion will come on them. Well, that's not just a lie about the Bible. You start believing lies in any area and you get deluded. Everything starts getting dark. That's why there are people you know and I know, they don't see any hope. They haven't been out of their house since May. And they see no hope. Why? Because they believed a lie. Amen. Amen. Yeah, but you know, Pastor, people are dying. 150,000 people die every day from something. Amen. What the world's dealing with now is a very small percentage of that 150,000. But before the deceitful words and the deceitful language started being spouted about, people just got up, went to work, did whatever they needed to do. Not even thinking twice that 150,000 people are going to die today. But because it's something that nobody supposedly has an answer for, fear it. If that's how you look at it, there's some of y'all in here need to feel fear algebra because you have no idea. You see an algebraic equation and your mind goes, it's just, it's over. You say, how do you know? I am one. <laughs> right? But what I'm saying, there are things that we don't know about that are unknowns, but we just get up and face them. You get up every day and you face what's going on in the world with the Word of God and you declare what the Word of God says, and you live your life in truth, Amen. not in the deceit. Amen. Amen. Am I helping you? Amen. You, can't, you can't start believing the lie because it moves you out of truth. And when Lucifer looked at himself and saw how beautiful he was, somewhere out of his consciousness came this idea, you ought to be God. Look at you, never taking into consideration who created him. Amen. That's why God, God had such a problem. What did he say? Should the thing created say to the one that created it, why did you make me this way? God has a problem with that. But somewhere he started believing, I should be God. I am beautiful enough. I am talented enough. And he started telling that lie to a third of the angels, and they believed it. Right. They, how long did he tell them? I don't know. The Bible is not plain. Could have been multiplied number of years, thousands of years. I don't know. But he said it long enough for them to believe it. Amen. Right. Amen. Adolf Hitler made a statement one time. He said, isn't it convenient for leaders that men do not think? Right. And he said, because if you tell a lie big enough and long enough, they'll believe it. Amen. He wrote in his book, Mein Kampf, he wrote this. He said, he said, the bigger the lie and the more outrageous the lie, the more men will believe it. 
Think about this for a moment. At the height of their popularity, the Nazi party in Germany, there were 8.5 million members of the Nazi party. There were 45 million people in Germany at the time. 8.5 million people wrested control of that nation out of their hands. Through what? A lie. Deceit. I read a book one time called How Do You Kill 11 Million People? Answer, lie to them. Amen. Lie to them. 11 million people died in Hitler's extermination camps because they were lied to. They, they, they would go into those ghettos of the cities and they'd put barbed wire around the ghettos and then the, uh, 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 Eichmann, his henchman for the final solution, he, I'm telling you this for a reason, he would come in and he would meet with the Jewish leaders. He would tell them everything's going to be okay. He would take bribes from them. And they would walk out of there telling everybody, well, they, they took bribes from us, they took our money, so they, they must not be planning to do anything bad. And then the day that they were loading them on the cars, they would go in there with minimal guard presence. See, don't get your history from movies. They would go into those cities with minimal guard presence. Why? You don't want to alert everybody. You're lying to them. The lie is the weapon. Amen. Are, you, are you hearing me? The lie is the weapon. And so they would go in there, and, 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 and then on the day that they were loading him in the cars, he would make a speech. And he would tell them basically this, we're sorry that we had to do this so abruptly, but the Russians are advancing on our on our front, and we had to do this for your protection. And he had Jewish leaders behind him. And he would say, we're taking you to a place where your husbands will find work, your wives will be able to stay home, and your children are going to go to school. It's going to be great. And then he would say, and we're all going to be uncomfortable in these cars, all of us. Fathers, please keep your families all together. Why? You want to kill them all. And so they load, would load over a hundred Jews into cars designed for eight cows, shut the door and padlock it. It's too late now. How you kill 11 million people? Lie to them. And so they believed a lie, and they went to their death. Well, pastor, that's horrible. It is horrible. Lies are horrible. The tool is the lie. If, you, if the devil knows if he can get you listening to a lie long enough, you'll start believing it. And you'll start going down that direction. That's why when you know something's a lie or deceit, get away from it. Pay no attention to it. My pastor said this one time. I never forgot it. He said, when someone I trust becomes intimate with someone I distrust, my opinion of them changes. If someone lies to you or you know they've been caught in a lie, your opinion of them should change. Amen. Well, how should it change? They should no longer be trusted. Right. Amen. Amen. If you lie to the Senate, it's a felony. If they lie to you, it's politics. Right. Right. Yep. You, you, right? Yeah. you got to be listening to what's going on on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So it went on and said, In the truth he did not maintain his standing because truth does not exist in him. What had happened to Lucifer? The lie had overcame the truth. There was no more truth in him. I worked in a, for a company, uh, U.S. Steel, for a while. And one of the things that we had to do, we had to carry a respirator with us everywhere we were in, in, the, in, the, in the plant because we used uh, ammonia uh, to inject fertilizer. And you would run into ammonia pockets. Well, what ammonia does when it's injected into an area is it deprives that area of oxygen. That's why if you inhale enough ammonia, you'll pass out and very quickly because you can't breathe. 
it displaces oxygen. Well, you would run into those pockets and you would smell that ammonia and you had to get that respirator on because you don't know how long the pocket is. Could be five yards, could be 200 yards. When a lie comes into your spirit, it immediately starts displacing truth. Amen. Amen. Has anybody ever told a lie on you and somebody that you knew started treating you different? Well, what, what happened? They didn't twist that person's arm. They didn't put him in a headlock. Now listen here, you're going to think different about Ricky Carter. You hear me? Okay. No, that's not, what, that's not what happened. They lied. Now I know you know a lot of these verses. And we're going to go to them in just a moment. In, in the book of Genesis, Satan told two lies. He lied about what God said and he lied about God. Eve believed both lies, and look what it got her. Because what did she have? The truth. You shall not eat of the tree that's in the middle of the garden. Period. End of discussion. That's truth. The enemy started lying about what God said. Amen. So he said, whenever he's speaking a lie out of the things that are his own private possessions, he's speaking because he is a liar and the father of it. That's why you've got to watch things like this. Somebody say, uh, you coming to church tonight? Oh, I can't. Can't or won't? Can't or won't? Because can't denotes that there's something inhibiting you that you can't do it. Amen. Well, you know, Pastor, I've got to get my kids up early for school. Then say that. No, I won't be there because I've got... Get the kids up early for school. Because in reality, you could be here. Amen. You're physically able to be here. I'm not preaching on your church attendance. I'm just saying, that, 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 that becomes something for people. Oh, I had something come up. Something, what is it? What came up? Right. Well, you know, no, I don't know. Are you lying? Or did something come up? Well, everybody's saying, who's everybody? If there's five of us in the room, is everybody saying that? All five of us? I didn't say it, so you're one off already. Who's saying it? Well, Jamie said it. Okay, that's what I need to know. So everybody's not saying it. Jamie's saying it. And we know it's good if you're saying it. What I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that's subtle. That's the subtlety of deceit and of non-truth. Right? right? That's the problem with polls. They're deceitful. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? People know how historically inaccurate polls are, but they make decisions based on them. It bothers me when you have Christians that are supposedly believers in the Word and they'll say, well, this generation, the millennials, we have the poll numbers that prove what we're saying. What? You're basing something on polls and right out of the other side of your mouth you'll talk about how woefully inaccurate polls are? Don't use them then. Right. It is what it is. Yes is yes. What's the Bible say? You let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything other comes from sin. Is that what he said? You coming to church tonight? No, I'm not going to be there. Yeah, but what do they think? Who cares? You don't have to give me a reason why you're not coming to church. Amen. Well, we start at 7 tomorrow. What time can I expect you? Well, I'll try to be there by 7. What do you mean by that? Either you're going to be here at 7 or not. I mean, there's some of y'all sitting in here. We know you're not going to be there at 7. We know. <laughs> Hallelujah. But my, my point in saying that is if, you, if, if the deceit continues, oh, but Pastor, that's no big deal. If your word cannot be trusted, it's a big deal. Amen. If when I hear something from you, I question it, it's a big deal. Amen. Mm. 
Right? So if two people said something, don't say everybody's saying. Or all kinds of people. I got all kinds of people coming and asking me. Who are all kinds? What, what do you mean? What do you mean? Black, white, female, male, fat, skinny, old, young? What kinds? What kinds? Well, actually, it was just, you know, it was just uh, two, two, one guy and, and this girl. And, you know, oh, so two people. Not all kinds. This isn't Baskin Robbins. <laughs> and not 32 varieties. <laughs> That's why I like him, because he laughs at my stuff. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Look, look, look at 1 John 2. It is pretty funny. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> 1 John 2 and 21. Notice what he says. He said, I've not written unto you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. No lie is of the truth. So he's saying, I'm not writing to you because what, what's going on? The Gnostics are trying to invade the church here. And John says, you know that what they're saying is wrong. It's a lie, so there's no truth in it. He said, I'm not writing to you because you don't know the truth. I'm writing to you because you know it. You know the truth. And what they're saying to you is not in the truth, so therefore it's a lie. Amen. There that's, why, that's, that's why you consult the Word. What's the Word say? If it's not in the Word, it's not the truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So truth does not exist in the devil. And, and when he lies, he's only doing what comes natural to him. Amen. Hallelujah. He is a liar. There's no truth in him. So when a person lies or is a party to a lie, that's who their partner is. The devil. Right. Yeah. Amen. Look in Genesis 3. Don't be deceived and listen to nothing that's deceitful. Now, for the sake of time, of course, this, the Bible says that the, the serpent was more subtle uh, than any beast of the field or cunning. And, and, and we know that Satan uh, possessed an actual serpent here because that wasn't... the complete nature of the serpent. But the enemy is still that way. He's very cunning, very subtle. And it says, he said to the woman, has God said you shall not eat of the tree of the fruit of the garden? And of course, you know what the woman said. He said you'll die if you eat of it. Notice what he said. Here's line number one. The serpent said you'll not surely die. Now wait a minute. Right there. No, God said we would. What did she do? Listen to a lie. Don't be deceived and listen to nothing that's deceitful. Right. Folks, where, where, where we're concerned and what we believe is concerned, you, that, people, I've had people over the years say, well, why don't you uh, watch people that don't believe you know, that it's always God's will to heal. Because I don't want anything in my spirit that tries to tell me it's not always God's will to heal me. Amen. That's a lie. Amen. It's deceit. Amen. Yeah, but they're so good. Yeah, but the, it, listen, I got some brownies for you, and they just have a little bit of cow manure in them. I mean, a, a pinch, you won't even know. I don't even know where it's at. I've dropped it in the batter and... You want some brownies? No. Just the thought. You'll not surely die. 
No, the truth is, I will die. Now this is important. Because this was not something where he came with flashing lights. I'm the devil. I'm a liar. I'm trying to deceive you. He entered into a conversation with her. Has God said? It could be like this. What do you think? What do you think about what's going on? What's your opinion? And then, and then here comes the lie. And by now she's enamored. She's infatuated with what's going on, with his subtlety, with his cunning. Right? Let's read. For God knows in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes will be opened and you'll be as God's knowing good and evil. Second lie. That wasn't why God was trying to keep them from the tree. He's trying to keep them from the tree because the fruit of the people, people have asked over the years, what was the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Death. God was trying to keep them away from spiritual death. Satan lied to them. God's trying to keep something from you. Amen. And the lie caused her to start looking at that tree differently than she'd ever looked at it before. Just like the illustration I used before. If, somebody lie, if you lie on someone or they lie on you, people that know you will start looking at you differently. Amen. Unless they really know the truth about you and abide in that truth. Right. Amen. 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 I've had people say something to me about somebody before. Well, so-and-so said this. I said, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. Well, you weren't there. How do you know? Because I know them. Amen. Right. Well, were you right? Exactly right every time. When you know the person telling you something is a liar, that should make you second guess everything they're saying right away. Amen. Right? Hallelujah. So it lied to Eve, and here's the thing. Lies deceive, lies twist, lies destroy. And he lied to Eve about what God said, and he lied about God. Liars hate truth. It's their worst enemy. Amen. Amen. That's why, you know, if you're a liar and you're a deceiver, don't go get your hair done in a state that you're not supposed to be getting your hair done in. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And then get mad at the lady and demand an apology. <laughs> I want you to apologize because I lied. Uh-huh. Right? See, so, so you can lie with your mouth and you can lie with your actions. That's right. Amen. Now, here, folks, I'm not, I'm not being political, but I want you to hear me. Now, think about it. Think. This is a person that will get up and just hammer people about not caring. They don't care about you. It's one rule for them and one rule for you. But I thought in the state you were in, ma'am, that you weren't allowed to have your hair done unless it was outside. And you're inside. You hear what I'm trying to say? So... You're a liar because there's one rule for you and one rule for me. It's not partisan politics. I'm not not picking on a Democrat or a Republican. I'm trying to explain to you that if that's in you, if you will take those actions knowing that the governor of the state you represent has put this out there, Right? Amen. Amen. You know, when they shut the hair places down, we all had some quarantine hair there for a little bit. <laughs> I, I had somebody email the office in, or call or something in Little Rock say, what's up with Pastor's hair? He's got a, got a little whoosh going on. Well, I can't. My wife don't cut hair. I tried to cut it. That didn't work. Uh, 
<laughs> Hallelujah. So, right? So, 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 so my point being, when you start trying to deceive, Amen. it displaces truth. So from the beginning of the human race, we see Satan trying to deceive and lying to people. Let's look at a couple things real quick. Genesis, or uh, excuse me, Exodus 20 and 16. And this is a, a familiar verse, but he says, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. The very first definition of the word false is lie. Right. Then deception and then untruth. So, and, and notice this is interesting because of the word against. You shall not lie against your neighbor. So in other words, a lie is against the person. So there's no reason, that, that, or I should say this, there is a reason for everything God said not to do. One of the most destructive things you can do to a person is lie to them. Right. Hallelujah. Notice Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. And verse 19. And we should start in verse 16 just to see. These six things does the Lord hate. The seven are an abomination to Him. So it's not just the seventh one that's an abomination. He says, I hate them and they're abominations to me. What is it? What, well, the first one, one of, one of the, the main ones here. Verse 19, a false witness that speaks lies. God says, I hate that. The word hate. The, the, the only word that describes it is odious in the Hebrew, odious. If you've ever been around somebody that didn't bathe regularly and wear deodorant, you know what I'm talking about. They are very odious. Right? Odious. This, this is so important because lying and liars stink in God's nostrils. God will forgive anything, but He doesn't change His opinion about it. Amen. He says, this stinks to me. And so I don't want to be ingesting something that's offensive to God. Amen. Right. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I've, and I've got to think about that, because God hates that. If, if God hates lying, how can I align myself with someone that, I'm in, that I know is a liar? Amen. Right? The, the season we're in, the election season we're in, this is the most important election any of us have ever faced. Any of us have ever faced, this is the one. I printed out the parties. I printed out the party platforms. The Democratic National Committee platform and the Republican National Committee platform. I'm not preaching partisan politics. I'm telling you, you go look it up. You can go look it up yourself. When you look at the Democratic National Committee, they said, here is some of our goals. Number one is we're going to provide safe, a health, a safe effective health care to all women, including access to safe, legal abortion on demand. Right. So therefore, murder. So they're saying that the 61 million babies that have been aborted since it became legal, don't matter. There was, there was a, a, a bishop of a very well-known denomination that came out recently, and he made this statement, 
And, and, and here's the sad fact about it, is, is, he's, is, is the, the, uh, 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 the group that he's dealing with supposed to be spirit-filled. And he said, don't let the other side put you under guilt and condemnation because you want to go have an abortion. The only thing you're doing is trying to get rid of something you never wanted. You didn't desire that baby, so just go get rid of it. And he said, it's just a blob. Now, you put your vote for that kind of person, you're a party to it. What are you going to say to those 61 million babies? See? And, and when you listen and put your approval and align yourself with someone that you know is a liar, you're now a party to it. Amen. The second thing was, we're going to work to make sure that all LGBTQ plus rights are basically put on the same level as civil issues, civil rights. I told my church in Little Rock, I'll tell everybody here too, if you're in here and you're African American, I would be appalled. I would be appalled that they are trying to put that lifestyle choice on the same level of civil rights that people of my race and people of my generation died and suffered to bring to me. There there are people of, of, of black heritage in here. You had family members down your family tree that suffered in slavery, that were abused during the civil rights movement. Yes? There are people in here, you can remember the oppression. Why would you ever, why would you ever lower yourself to vote for somebody that wants to bring a lifestyle choice up to the same plane as that? Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and those two reasons right there are important enough. Amen. 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 They want to redefine the Bible, folks. Any, any, anybody that preaches from the Bible that homosexuality is a sin, the leading candidate said, uh, uh, that's, you know, you, you're, you're not going to be able to preach that anymore. Because that's not truth. You can't redefine truth. Truth is truth. Amen. Truth is truth. Right? That's why Pilate said, what is truth? Why, why would he say that? Because Pilate's definition of truth was variable. It might be truth today, but it's not truth tomorrow. This is truth for all men for all time. Forever. This is truth. That's why we base it on truth. Now, I'm far from being political. I'm telling you, what are we going to do? At some point, we got to stand up and say, I'm going to vote for what the truth says. I'm going to say, I'm going to say what is true. Amen. We are the majority. Yes. The problem is, it's a known fact that millions upon millions of Christians sit on their blessed assurance every election season and don't go to the polls because they don't want to be political. And then a liar gets in the White House, a murderer gets in the White House, and they complain about it. If you don't go vote, there's two things. Number one, you're sinning. And number two, you don't have a right to gripe. If you don't vote, you're sinning. Because it is a biblical mandate that when my country needs my services, I'm supposed to go and give them my services. That voting is a privilege that was bought and paid for by the blood of countless men and women. The men that signed our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution, every one of them were charged with treason by the King of England. And if they were found, they would be hung or shot on sight. And John Hancock said, well, King George doesn't read too well and his eyes aren't good I'm going to sign it real big amen. Amen. amen we have a responsibility to stand up for truth and I can't fail to stand up for truth and then complain about the consequences 
Adam didn't stand up for truth and he blamed Eve. Eve didn't stand up for truth and she blamed the devil. The only one didn't blame nobody was the devil. <laughs> Maybe because there's nobody else in line. I don't know. But. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Do you see that? Well, Pastor, you know, there's liars on both sides. You are absolutely right. You are so right, it's not even funny. But, but at some point, I've got to say, what, what platform does the party that I'm going to cast my vote for stand for? What, what, what is their platform? And you can't be inert. You can't be neutral. Well, I'm just not going to vote for either one of them. Then, then a vote for nobody is a vote for whoever wins. Hallelujah. Because, we're, listen, we're going to stand accountable. We're going to stand accountable for it. And you have an opportunity during this election season to save those 61 million aborted babies. I did my part to make sure this doesn't happen anymore. Amen. I did my part. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you start listening to the sea. Folks, all of this, and, and, and Lord, you have me here for a reason. All of this, pe people start, all of these movements that are, that are trying to cause destruction. People say, well, you know, uh, 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 all this violence, you know, black lives matter. Black lives do matter. But if that group really believed that black lives matter, they would want to shut down abortion clinics because that's the number one killer of black children in America is abortion. The founder of Planned Parenthood was a racist woman that started Planned Parenthood for the purpose of killing black babies. If that group really believed Black Lives Matter, why aren't they protesting abortion? Because it's not about black lives. It's about their agenda. It's about a lie. It's about deceit. It's stirring young men and women up and getting them out there to get themselves hurt, put themselves in harm's way, and destroy their nation. It's not about them. It's about their agenda. Amen. Are you following me? I'm, I'm just telling you, don't believe the deceit. Are there injustices in our nation? Yes. Too many. But don't believe the deceit. Don't believe the lie. Listen to the spirit of truth. Amen. Follow the money trail. The people that are back in that group aren't even black. Amen. And I've had people come to me, Pastor, you'll never understand what it's like being black. You're exactly right, because I'm white. I won't. I can't know. I'm sorry. What do you want me to do about that? I can't do anything about that. What I can do is present you with the truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you believe the lie and you believe the deceit in any, any of this, then the truth gets taken out of it. Amen. I say the truth gets taken out of it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you. Do you see that? Look at Proverbs 25 and verse 18. I'll hurry here a little bit. I, I've, I've, made the, I've, I've made the decision. We're making a difference in this election. We're, we're making a difference. This is too important. One man said this. He said, he said, if the right person doesn't get in office, you can kiss America goodbye. I don't know if anybody watched the convention that was on recently. And I'm not advocating. I'm just saying. There's a little Cuban man that gave a speech. And through tears, he told the people in attendance, he said, I've seen this before. In two countries, I've seen this. He said, I've seen two nations go socialist, and you don't want that. 
And he made the statement, when they start taking your freedoms, they never give them back. You need, you need to remember that before you believe the deception and the lie of any of this. Yeah, but they're going to give free health care and free education and free this and free that. How? How? It's never worked. In the history of the world, it's never worked. Do, do you see the deception? But somebody will stand up there with some horn-rimmed glasses on and a college degree and say, yeah, but I figured it out. You no. Know, the smartest, wisest minds ever could never make it work. You can't make it work. Amen. You cannot give everything away and expect to be successful. And, that, and, that, and that's just the beginning of it. It's a deception. Yeah, but... They got it figured out. Do you even know what we're talking about? Remember, isn't it convenient for leaders that men do not think? I laughed and one and, and I laughed just out of don't they don't they know what they're doing? One group that was protesting tore a statue down of George Washington Carver. one of the greatest proponents of black men and women the world's ever known, and they didn't even know who he was. Because people will listen to things and have no idea and no knowledge and no information about what the truth is, and they just get into a frenzy. That's called a mob mentality. That's not what we're called to. The Bible says we're called to think, we're called to investigate through the Scripture and make a decision based on truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I helping anybody? Amen. Proverbs 25 and 18. Actually, verse 19. No, I'm sorry, verse 18. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. All that sounds bad. It's like when you read through the curse and it says you'll get the botch and the itch and the scab. I don't want none of that. I, I don't even know what it is, but the botch. <laughs> What's he got? The botch. Whew. Or the scab. Boy, well, he's got the scab. Whew. Anyway. That word maul, it means a scatterer, a breaker a disperser, a scattering club. So notice that. So a, a liar breaks, scatters, destroys. It's what we're seeing in our country right now. Amen. Lies and deceit. And what's it, what's it do? It disperses, it scatters, it breaks. Amen. The enemy is trying so hard to bring division among God's people, among the people that we need to reach in the world. Amen. I don't fear it. I made the decision. I'm not, I'm not going to fear racism. I'm not going to fear prejudice. I'm not changing anything that I do or the way I do anything. Amen. When people start talking about racism and prejudice, I don't understand it. I wasn't raised with it. I wasn't raised around it. I don't understand it. But I know the Bible does. And here's what I know. Sin is still the problem and Jesus is still the answer. Yeah. Right? And if we keep preaching redemption loud enough and long enough, people will believe it. And that's what's going to change things. Amen? Let me hurry because I want you to see this real quick. Uh, Psalm 15. I got about 10 minutes. Psalm 15. You're right, I can preach it pretty quick. Psalm 15, verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in your tabernacle? So who will be close to you? Who will have interaction with you? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? Notice, he goes through this list. He that walks uprightly and works righteousness. Notice, and speaketh the truth in his heart. 
He that backbiteth not with his tongue or does evil to his neighbor or taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. The person in whose eyes a vile person is contemned. Now think about that. Now tell me it's okay to hang out with liars. Because God said in Proverbs, I hate liars. I hate lying. And he's saying, who's going to have intimate fellowship with you? Who's going to be in your holy hill? And he says, a person that speaks truth in his heart and in whose eyes a vile person is contemned or rejected. But he that honoreth them, he honoreth them that fear the Lord. Who else does he honor? He that sweareth to his own hurt and changes not. Remember what Proverbs says? It says, don't give yourself to those that are given to change. In other words, that doesn't mean change for the better. It means they tell you one thing and do another thing. They promise and don't follow through. Amen. This person speaks truth. If it costs them, they're going to speak truth. This is us. Why? We're of the truth. We're of the truth. So that means you put partisan politics away, you put racial politics away, and you vote the truth. Why? You're of the truth. Is that right? Folks, there are not black lies and white lies. There are not big lies and little lies. There's not. A lie is a lie. Amen. Well, I kind of shaded the truth. You lied. Well, it wasn't a very big lie. Well, the Bible doesn't say here that God hates big liars. <laughs> right? Hey, <laughs> they're, they're just lies. If you say something with the intent of, intent of deceit, you're lying. Amen. That's, that's what bothered me, and that's what... That's what pulled me away from it. And you do whatever you want to do. I'm not telling you what to do. But I got so tired of hearing college coaches sign million, hundred millions of dollar contracts and say, yeah, we're going to be here for life. And a year later, gone. Broke the contract and left. Yeah, but you know, Pastor, that's business. No, that's a lie. You signed a contract for five years. You didn't negotiate your way out of it. You broke it and you left. And you went and signed a contract with somebody else. The Bible says not to meddle with you. Amen. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did, do you see that? So don't tell lies. Don't listen to lies. Don't be a party to a lie. Look at Genesis 20 real quick. I want you to see something here. And then I got one story and we'll be done. Now why is this so important? Because faith resides on truth. And if you're not walking in truth, your faith's not going to be operating correctly. And I have a hard time praying for my nation when I voted for the person that's causing the problem. How can I pray to end abortion when I voted for somebody that wants to make it and keep it legal? How can I call a certain lifestyle a sin and say I'm not okay with it as a Christian, but yet I cast a vote for somebody that's okay with it? Genesis 20, verse 1. Abraham journeyed from, uh, from thence toward the south country, dwelled between Kadesh and Sur, and, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife. Now notice what the Bible says. It lets us know this is his wife. What he say of her? She's my sister. We could have saved the writer some space. Abraham lied. Right? Now, notice this. Uh, verse 3. 
God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said, Behold, you're a dead man. For the woman which you have taken, for she's a man's wife. The center column reference says she's married to a husband. And I'm not going to get into all that, but uh, he said, I did this in the integrity of my heart. Now notice something. Hmm. <clears throat> when you look at this, in verse 9, Then Abimelech called to Abraham and said, Why have you done this unto us? How have I offended you that you brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. One translation says, what have, I, uh, what have you done to us? What were you thinking? What have I ever done to deserve you bringing such great shame and guilt on me and my kingdom? You have done things to me that should never be done to another human being. Now, I've heard preachers preach, well, you know, Abraham didn't really, I mean, you know, she was his sister. Well, but, but wait a minute. The moment she became his wife, she was no longer his sister, she's his wife. Amen. Pastor Michelle and I were friends before we got married. Amen. But after we got married, I promise you, she was no longer just my friend. Amen. She's my wife. Right? Wife trumps friend. Amen. That'll help some of y'all. Right? Yeah, but he was, he, was, he, was, he was lying for a reason. There's never a reason to lie. He almost got this man killed. If God had not been looking on Abimelech's heart, he would have died that night. And it would have been because of a lie. But Abimelech said, look, he lied to me. I did this in my integrity. God said, I know that you did it. In the Read it. I know that it was the integrity of your heart. That's why I'm letting you off. Right. And Abimelech, Abimelech, a heathen king, rebuking the father of our faith for lying. Amen. What does that mean? Abraham didn't think it was any big deal. How do I know that? He did it twice. Got away with it the first time. Didn't get away with it this time. Amen. So look at that last part of that. You've done things to me that should never be done to another human being. You should never lie to another human being. Abraham's lie almost cost this man his life. God knew he'd been deceived and showed him mercy. Amen. Amen. So ever what you think of Abimelech taking Sarah, that was the custom in, in that country. He paid for her. Read on the scripture. He made Abraham a lot more wealthy than he was. But the point is, I've, I've got to make a decision that I'm going to listen to what is truth and I'm not going to be deceived. Amen. I'm going to speak truth because I'm of the truth. Amen? Well, stand up, everyone. Praise the Lord. I'm of the truth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Today at 4.30, we will have a uh, small Ask Your Pastor event in the back. You can surely come and ask your pastor. A good question, I hope. Amen. And we always have something to say, so even if you don't have a lot of questions, we'll, we'll do something. Praise God. God's good to us. Amen. Of course, 6 o'clock tonight, we'll be back again uh, preaching the Word of God. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes. Put your hand over your heart. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I purpose right now to be a teller of truth and to listen to truth. I'll not be deceived or listen to deceitful things. Thank you for helping me to be truthful in everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, come on, say it with me this morning. The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith 
and frame their world by the Word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this message. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or want to share how this message has helped you, send us an email at main at buildfaith.net. This message and many more materials are available to you free of charge, can be found at buildfaith.net or at any of our location media stores. As always, keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God.